How many can I do in time? Lose. Okay, countdown works clearly. <laughs> you saw that. And the you lose comes up when the countdown reaches zero. The depth is a little bit wrong. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is part six of creating Memory Match with Phaser Editor 2D. Now, Memory Match is a Mario Party inspired memory game where you walk around uh, to find matches with a character. Let's refresh this so you can see. Uh, you have this character, you walk around, you find different matches, just like the memory game, um, until you find all the matches. Now, Phaser Editor 2D is a uh, visual editor where you can lay out your scene visually, um, inspect the component, inspect the game object, add components, and configure various properties in the inspector here uh, for the Phaser 3 game framework. So in the last five parts, we talked about components, prefabs, setting up our project, adding files to our project, these assets right here, the you know our images, creating animations, all that stuff. So do check the previous five parts for all that. Now in this last part, part six, we're gonna add a countdown timer. And so in the original tutorial that uses Phaser by itself without Phaser Editor 2D, uh, we created a controller class to handle the countdown, like this countdown controller. Now with Phaser Editor 2D and the component uh, paradigm that it uses, the component pattern that it uses, we can create a countdown component instead of using this controller. So what we'll do is create a text object up here. So let's go here, right click, add object. We're gonna add a text, create Let's move this text up here. Now we can just adjust this. Uh, let's call this countdown text. It'll be scoped to the class. So when we change this, it means that we can do this dot countdown text to uh, reference this text game object in other methods in our level, in our, in, in our scene uh, code class. And the first is the scene, um, the visual scene editing uh, that we can do here. So down here, we want to adjust. Let's make my stuff a little bit smaller and to the left. So let's leave that alone. We're gonna, the font alone, we're gonna make this bigger and be 48. Okay, let's set the origin uh, somewhere. I'm sure we'll see it. Let's make this 45, 45 seconds, 45. Now let's see, origin, there we go, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and centered roughly there. Okay, so that's good. So now let's save that, just see it, run it, we hit play, and we have this countdown uh, number at least, doesn't, doesn't do anything. So let's make a countdown component Let's go down here to our game components file. Let's add a new component and let's call this countdown save. So it generates a countdown.js. You can open it here. And the game object is going to be a text. So we can actually get better code generation here if we change this to text. Save. Open. And now it's text. So let's look at our tutorial here and what did we do? Right, we're still gonna want this start. So we want all of these. Yep, let's do that. Just take these, insert our own code down here in the uh, comment blocks where it says start, start user code. Um, you can write your own code that does not get overwritten by Phaser Editor 2D when it generates the generated code based on the settings you set in the inspector. So there's that. Now we're gonna want to add this update. So this is how we're getting update events um, for our components using the phaser.scene.events.update event on the scene itself. And let's go up here. We're gonna do const scene, which we get by referencing it from the game object. Do this, this.update. So this will then be called every frame like the update on the scene um, class itself. Great, we do want this. 
So this happens on start. Yeah, I'll just copy this entirely. So we're not going over too much of this specific code since we've already done that in the previous memory match series and in this memory match written tutorial. We'll link to all that stuff in the description below. Uh, so here what we're gonna do is const scene this dot game object dot scene. Now because we're in a component, which is very light since it is a plain class, doesn't extend anything. Um, it has only whatever um, a, a plain JavaScript object would have. So it's very light. And uh, do that. So it doesn't have this dot scene. You need to get, get your own reference to the scene, which is passed in, uh, which we get by the passed in game object instance when this uh, component is created. So that's that. So it's not. Um, so it's not this dot label. It's this dot game object, right? That's the actual text object. So it's zero. This does not callback duration. That looks good. Now timer event. Yeah, let's just add this. We don't strictly need to add this, but let's just do it. Um, let's do it up here. Do this timer event. Okay. Now stop. So if there's a timer event, gonna do that. And then in the updates, so I'm gonna copy this. And the nice thing about components is because we're using this, the update event, we have our own update method. We can uh, just add the component to our game object and then update will just be called on it versus in our previous setup, we had to call update manually on the countdown controller. Let's make sure this is all good. This dot game object. This dot duration, we have to do this dot duration up here. Duration. I think it actually mentions that somewhere over here. Yep. Using counter from game. So we don't we're not gonna do it this way. We're gonna add our countdown component to the text object, text game object that we just created. So let's go over here and to our scene. Now let's gotta remember when we make a new component, we need to add the component, the script to our asset pack dot JSON file. And in a previous video, we mentioned that it's similar to asset bundles in Unity, uh, where basically this is a manifest of all the assets you want in your game, and it's loaded at once when the asset pack JSON file is loaded. So that's if we add everything in there, and then it'll be loaded um, when our when our phaser game starts. I just closed the level. JS files, we open that. Okay, so countdown checks. Okay, what we're, what we're looking to do, almost forgot, is to the uh, game object text, the countdown text we created here. We are going to add a component. We're going to add the countdown component to it. And then in our level.js, we're going to want to start it when the game starts, which is here. So let's go countdown dot get component this dot countdown text dot start and let's see what did we want it to do when we started it handle countdown finished dot find this so this just makes sure that whenever this handle countdown finish method is called, the this context will always be uh, the this that we bound it to. So now let's go here, handle countdown finished. As we add that game over text, the you lose text. Let's just put this right here. This dot player. So again, um, we gotta do this. In the previous video, I mentioned that it would behoove, or be good practice if you're if you're not familiar with the component um, pattern, to add a property to get the body from the player from the physics component that we created in part one. So you don't have to do this um, constantly. Phaser dot physics dot arcade dot body. Okay, save that and. And, and we're doing this because uh, we're injecting the arcade component 
components into our plain game object sprite, sprite game object. So it doesn't have set velocity like you would normally do if you created a physics sprite from this dot physics dot add dot sprite. Since we don't, we can't create a physics sprite currently in Phaser Editor 2D, we did it a different way, which is in this physics component, we do add that existing um, and then put the game object in there. So that'll inject all those physics components into this game object, which is a normal sprite, or in this case, an image. Um, but actually, I think, right, we set it to the image so that it can be more flexible for anything that wanted to be, any visual thing that wanted to have physics, because our boxes are images. Okay, back here to our handle countdown finished. That looks good. Let's go back to this tutorial here. So that's what we expect. Okay, let's just say we skipped over some stuff here. Countdown, that stop. So we're going to want to stop it when we uh, find all the matches and the countdown is not finished yet. And so like we mentioned earlier, we don't need to do this because we're hooking into the um, update event of the scene from the component. So it'll just get update calls whenever update the update event is fired. Okay, so let's see. Check for matches. You want to call stop. Check for match, check for match here. We have four matches, game one. So we're gonna wanna do countdown.getComponent, this.countdowntext.stop. And there we go. So now, if we start it with not 45 seconds, it'll be faster to test. So in create here, we're calling that. So start takes callback and then the duration. So we're going to say 10 seconds. Let's just test this. See if we get any errors, if we missed something. We do have errors. Let's move myself. Set velocity of null. And let's see. This dot player dot body. Uh, let's say no countdown finished. Why was this called? Let's see. Handle countdown finished. Oh no, uh, did I, I mean never. Nope, this is correct. This the handle countdown finished. Okay, let's see. Breakpoint. Okay, here's my stack. Duration. Let's see. So it's calling this on start. Oh, 10 is, uh, yep. Yeah. Not, not 10 seconds, it should be 10,000. Let's come back here. One, two, three. That's 10 seconds. Okay, now it's running again. All right, so I can make matches. How many can I do in time? You lose. Okay, countdown works clearly. <laughs> you saw that. And the you lose comes up when the countdown reaches zero. The depth is a little bit wrong, but we can fix that pretty easily. Let's go to this countdown. Um, component here and in stop. Nope, where do we make the text? Oh no, we do that in levels. In level JS. We do that when handle countdown finished. Set depth. So let's just pick that 5000 as well. Just test that again real fast. Get our matches here. I guess you could almost finish this game. Okay, you'll lose in 10 seconds. So there is the countdown um, text. And so instead of using a controller like we did in the original uh, series here, we used a component in this uh, newer paradigm with Phaser Editor 2D with prefabs and components and the visual scene editing. You can do all these things differently. And so if you have not gone through the original memory match tutorial, do do that then come back 
and then um, check out how you can do with Phaser Editor 2D using a different programming paradigm altogether with components and prefabs. Now, of course, it's very easy for you to make you know crazier levels and um, add different items to to uh, match with as well versus the previous way we had it using the array grid to specify what is in each box. So there's many benefits to using Phaser Editor 2D to make your games. So if you're looking for more on Memory Match, actually we have this Memory Match Extras video course. You can um, go there at the last part of the Memory Match in Modern JavaScript series. We'll link it in the description below as well, where you can learn a whole bunch of other code organization um, uh, tricks, uh, not tricks, tips, strategies, um, and just and different ways to use Phaser. And the best part actually is if you want to use, learn more how to use Phaser Editor, you can go through the extras course and, and apply what you learned here in this video series for um, converting the existing code to use this newer components pattern in Phaser Editor 2D. Because we have modals in the course, the gamepad support, like all these things uh, could be re reimagined or reapplied or refactored uh, into the component pattern that Phaser Editor 2D allows you. So do go check that out. Link is in the description below. Now, so that's it for our series here on making memory match with Phaser Editor 2D. It is a uh, introductory look at Phaser Editor. We use the code editor in this ID itself inside the editor here in the web browser, but you can also use Visual Studio Code and we will do that in a future series um, where you can basically use Phaser Editor within your existing project without having to uh, have your project conform to the setup that we have here. Um, for example, we have our parcel template and our snowpack template, and the project setup is a little bit different than the code here. Uh, so you can also do that, and we will cover that in a future video. So thanks for watching. If you like this video or this series, do hit that like button and subscribe for more videos on using Phaser and Phaser Editor 2D to make games for the web.